This is CTV News Channel. I'm Todd Vander Hayden. Culture shock time now. Some of the top stories trending from the world of pop culture. And we're going to start with people watching other people play video games. Let me explain. Online games are increasingly being thought of as similar to physical sports, like as in, in the real world, where you have gamers that are playing and other people are watching them play. There is big money to be made, and some people really enjoy this kind of stuff. We're also hearing about physical spaces around North America that are being renovated into so-called gamer bars turning them into kind of like eSports arenas. Even the folks at TSN, our sister station, are now starting to put together different shows that focus on these so-called eSports, the gamers. Let's bring in our culture shockers who've been thinking about this and are giving us their take on this. We have got Dew and Nanda joining us. We've got Samantha Kemp-Jackson. And we've also got Kenny Bodanis joining us as well. Okay, let me start with you, uh, Dew and Nanda. Your take on this. I mean, are you at all interested in watching other people play video games? I'm barely interested in people watching people playing actual actual sports. So to watch people play eSports just seems like torture for me. I don't understand it at all. But given the fact that Fortnite, which is a specific game that has become this huge phenomena. That game alone received over 2.4 billion views in February alone on YouTube. So that just goes to show that there's a lot of people out there who are interested in this kind of thing. And that just blows my mind. And so, like you said, there's a lot of money to be made. These video game players are making millions of dollars by simply playing a video game. I wish I s actually did that when I was a kid, so maybe I could have been doing that today. Who knows? But uh, it's, it's, a, it's just completely something that I don't understand. But seeing the future of video games is quite exciting. I mean, with virtual reality coming in, I think the, the our entire future is going to be video-based, and I think there's so much that's going to happen. And so it's interesting interesting to see that people already are uh, jumping on this bandwagon. All right, let me ask you, Samantha, for your read, because it does lead to this notion of the impact of video games in our culture, and it is huge money. It makes double what Hollywood actually makes each and every year, and these games are, are so complicated, and it takes years to put them together here. But your read on this, I mean, this seems a bit strange to some people. Yeah, well, you know, I think, Todd, it's a phenomena that time has come. I mean, we play so much differently than we played even 10 or 15 years ago. And, you know, children, you would think, well, this could be boring to watch and, you know, they might not want to see it. But let's think about how kids play today. They play largely digitally. They play on video games. They play on their, you know, app games. Um, they connect with their friends and their colleagues via digital means. So it just goes to follow that it's a logical progression that they're going to play this way. And ergo, it's also entertaining for them. Their idea of what's entertainment uh, has changed from running outside, pl riding your bicycle to staying inside in, you know, a venue and watching video games. And as it was stated before, there's millions, actually billions of dollars to be made with this. So I'm not surprised at all. We were talking as we were prepping this segment with the three of you about Twitch, which is a very well-known online platform uh, that's making lots of money over this kind of stuff, allowing other people online to watch those really good players who are playing. Kenny, what's your read on all this? Well, you know, as I have a 13-year-old son who is gaming, and I needed to pull my head out of the sand because I shunned it and I thought too much screen time, more, more um, uh, aggressive behavior online, and aren't they violent games? And then I watched him playing with his friends, and he was on a headset, and they're laughing, and they're talking, and they're socializing. And look, it's all, not always going to be people gathered in a room watching a chess match, right? We watch people wear clothes on a runway at fashion shows. We watch people pound each other on a football field for hours from our basements. And as a parent, I think it behooves us to be interested in what our kids want to do and encourage the field that they're interested in and understand what gets them excited. Now, of course, everything in moderation. So if it starts to affect someone's social life, you shouldn't be into anything that pulls away from that. But this is the future and it's getting them excited. And I think every parent should be learning and know as much as possible of what's going on and get excited and get behind them. All right, let's move on from video games to a big controversy involving Kanye West, the pop star sparking outrage among civil rights activists and a whole lot more when he said 400 years of slavery was a choice. He was giving an interview to TMZ 
We're still trying to figure out what exactly he meant and why he would ever say this. Samantha, you start this one off for us. What do you make of it? Uh, well, you know, Kanye's being Kanye. I mean, he's made his career out of making outrageous statements, but this one is actually quite appalling and it is quite offensive and he's just downright wrong. And I'm not surprised that he's getting the backlash that he's getting in the media uh, from other uh, celebrities as well, both black and white. Um, but I, I think that he's backpedaling from it, but it's a little bit too late. I think Kanye needs to really think about what he says before he says it. And I realize that he just has, uh, you know, an album coming out or a new song coming out and maybe it's a publicity thing. But to what cost? I mean, I think that he's he's way off base here. And uh, I think he's at a point of no return. I think he's going to see the backlash lash continuing. So he does have a new album coming out in June. And you know, this is old expression. There's no such thing as bad publicity. But it really seems like this is beyond uh, that and, and really goes beyond the pale. Uh, and you think about it, Kenny, this is a guy who is certainly uh, looked up to by a lot of people in the African-American community and elsewhere as well. For him to say this, uh, your take. Well, you know what makes me sad is I don't think for him it's too late, and I don't think there's going to be a big enough backlash. In any private industry, you can talk with money. Now, we've heard a lot about activists and visible minority leaders are upset about this, but everybody should be upset about this. He just gave a green light to every white supremacist and racist out there to go, yeah, see? So you know what? If you're really angry, don't buy the record. Don't buy tickets to his concert ever. Don't click on any of his social media sites and let him be forced to cancel concerts because nobody's interested in showing up. But unfortunately, I have a strong suspicion that is not going to happen and he's not going to learn a lesson because there are too many people that are just willing to stay on the bandwagon and defend him. I mean, this is akin to saying that the Holocaust only happened because the Jewish people wouldn't fight back. And you can bet if somebody had said that out loud, there would be consequences to it. And I'd be very surprised if Kanye really suffered any monetary consequences, unfortunately. La last word on this one goes to you, Dewan. What's your read? Yeah, I think there needs to be some major consequences. I mean, he's trying to backtrack now, tweeting, saying, oh, I meant that they were mentally enslaved and that they had power in numbers. And I think that's completely incorrect to even say at all. I don't think there's any backtracking from this. Um, there needs to be consequences. I mean, clearly seeing how celebrities all over are reacting and voicing their concern about this, I won't be surprised to see a lot of people cutting ties with him and perhaps people being afraid to be attached to his name. And I think that will lead to some sort of monetary consequence. Does he care? I don't really know. I mean, when he started tweeting uh, about his likeness for Donald Trump, I was like, okay, maybe, you know, he has his reasons. Now it makes complete sense. They're basically the same people. And so um, <laughs> I'm really not surprised to see uh, that it's ended up this way. All right, let's go from Kanye to our final one. And this is about those who are trying to navigate the often choppy dating world. A new term has been coined for someone who you're dating, you break up with, but then they stay in your orbit on social media and perhaps elsewhere uh, by following you, keeping tabs on you. And the term that's being used is orbiting. In other words, they're still kind of orbiting around you, checking things out, looking at your Facebook, your Instagram and elsewhere. Maybe they're liking some of your tweets as the list goes on so they're no longer in your life in a physical sense but they're still kind of hanging around uh, Kenny Bodanis let me start with you on this mm. uh, brutal dating trend or just uh, making us human like we all are well, you know, there's a great line for when, when Harry met Sally. When he leaves a message on the answering machine, it says, you're not answering your phone, so it leads me to believe you're either A, unwilling to respond, unable to respond, or desperately want to respond, but are trapped or into something heavy. <laughs> so if somebody's <laughs> orbiting you, it means that they are able to respond, but they're just not that into you. So I say, congratulations, you now know you did not waste your life on a creep, and unfriend this person and move along. It's a gift to be able to, be able to move away with the, from this kind of person without any long-lasting effect. A great point. We want to show our viewers as well the term ghosting, which is another one that's used a lot by people. That's when someone you're dating simply cuts off all communication, disappears into the abyss, never to be heard from again. Stop responding to texts or messages online, as the case may be. Uh, do Ananda, let me ask you about this too, because it's really quite fascinating. All of these different intersection points that go on on social media nowadays, it's very different to cut all of those ties. And even when you break up with someone, it can feel almost a little juvenile, a little sort of... Uh, I don't know, brutal to actually unfriend them, so to speak.
Yeah, today's dating environment is not fun at all. I mean, especially with all this online dating and all these apps, you know, you meet people simply based on their photos and you talk on social media and then you meet up and then there's all this buildup and then you meet them in person and maybe it's not the same level of attraction or whatever and then you ghost them and like you said, it's really difficult to cut off those ties. And so ghosting, I understand, people are just cowardly, they don't know how to express their feelings, they just cut you out completely. But orbiting, that's some next level psychological stuff that I don't really understand because it's like, I don't like you, I completely ghosted you, but hey, I'm still alive, I'm here, notice me, just in case I end up feeling like I'm gonna die alone, I might hit you up, so just so you know, I'm here. Um, it's, it's really complicated, it's really messed up, and I'm not excited for the future of online dating. Samantha, what do you think about all this? It's really kind of interesting, too, because it makes us rethink uh, how we date and how we break up and how we move on or, I guess, don't move on. Yeah, I mean, I, th I find it really interesting as well, Todd. And I just have to say that I'm glad that I'm not dating and I haven't been dating for many years. Um, but I, I think that, you know, we used to do this back in the day. The only difference was we didn't have the means by which to kind of spy on our, our exes. Now we can just keep scrolling through their social media feed and see what they're up to. And because we're so conditioned, almost like Pavlov's dog, to click the like button when we see a photo or a comment that we like, we haven't even thought about the fact that we've ghosted them and now we're liking their pictures. So I think that it's almost an automatic response, more so than it is trying to be psychologically mean. Well, I hope the three of you will continue to orbit me and you won't ghost me. <laughs> never, Tom. We won't. We won't. <laughs> no worries, never. <laughs> Samantha Dewan and Kenny joining us for Culture Shock today. Great to have the three of you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks.